Ultra Life. It's another sellout in Indy, and there's 19-year head coach Tom Izzo, a three-time Big Ten Coach of the Year. He's won a national championship. He's been to six Final Fours. There you see the 10 on the floor. Michigan State led by Harris. Stauskas leads the Wolverines. And this year's Coach of the Year in the conference is John Beeline. Seventh season, Final Four a year ago, and a conference championship in his pocket after what was a terrific 15 and 3 season in the Big Ten. I'm not sure anybody could have seen this coming with the departure of Hardaway and Trey Burke and also the injury to Mitch McGarry, of course. Mike Kitts has been a Division I official for 31 years, retiring after this season. He has officiated four Final Fours. Terry Weimer has officiated a Final Four. And Gene Steratore, college basketball and NFL referee, is our third man on the floor. A great crew here in Indianapolis. You know, in a lot of ways, though, these teams are right where most expected they'd be preseason playing in this tournament title game. Just the paths have been a little bit different than most would have thought. And you're right, Michigan State has gone through so many injuries, and they've uh, just suddenly gotten healthy. You know, the remarkable thing is you look at the record, if Michigan State wins today, they will finish the season actually with a better record than Michigan, which is remarkable because you, you, you know what a, a great season it's been for the Wolverines. So it shows you how Michigan State has persevered and put something together here. Each team has won 25 games. Here's the triple. That was a really good contest by Karis LeBert. They're able to help them recover and bother Payne on that delivery. Payne relies a lot on that three-point shot. But he can also go down on the post. And I think Tom Izzo would love to see him get some baskets down on the block a little bit. You can challenge Michigan on the interior. Stauskas. <laughs> and he's picking up right where he left off against Michigan State. Made a total of eight threes, I think, in the two meetings during the regular season. And he has been an issue for Michigan State. Yeah, I'll say. Downs has had 19 points against Illinois on Friday. And then with 18 yesterday. A shot and the foul. And that was a smart play by Payne there. Didn't really have the catch that allowed him to attack offensively, so he goes with the repost, which is just a smart play. And you can see here, a lot of battle. They know how important both Michigan and Michigan State, that battle in the paint is going to be with paint. Morgan picks up his first. Quickly hits the bench. John Horford has come in for the Wolverines. Another foul. I think this one's going to go on Horford, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. You're right. I think what we're going to see John Beeline do is just kind of trade off between Morgan and Horford throughout the afternoon to, to try to keep one or the other on pain, but to try to keep both of them out of foul trouble. But two quick ones early, one on each. And, and the one thing that will allow for Michigan State is you will be able to attack the rim a little bit more easier against Michigan because they're not going to leave Payne if he's posted. Horford oh! defends Payne, and that is a foul, and something that goes on Horford. I mean, are you kidding? There are three fouls on the two Michigan big men in, in a minute and a half, but you see Michigan State strategy go inside. They know they have the physical edge in this game. So establish it early by going into your big man. And he'll get opportunities to operate down there also because like Michigan, Michigan State also very adept from beyond the three, so they're reluctant to provide help. So Horford will leave, and now they will go to Max Bielfeld, who is a redshirt sophomore from Peoria. On three deep now at that position. The free throw line is Adrian Payne. Second team all Big Ten. And here comes Matt Costello. He'll check in for Payne. And that's an interesting move. And, part, and it's done twofold. One, they want to make sure they pace Adrian Payne. Remember, coming back from the injury, the conditioning's still not there. And they don't want to waste his minutes against guys that they don't necessarily feel are going to be a factor in this game. On the other hand, you can look at it the other way. He could have gone at Biafelt, who's not used to guarding somebody like Payne. Biafelt has had his moments, but that's a difficult matchup. It is so playing it more towards his side, which is a defensive look. 
the freshman Walton Jr. Oh, and how about that? Two actually well played shots defensively that still because of Michigan's ability they're able to convert. Floater inside by Harris. Picked up by Costello. A lot of traffic outside Epling. Back to Costello. Bielfeld is there. Nice balance by Harris. Good spin by Costello. Oh, and he used his hand to gain leverage. Yeah, and, and that's one of those situations. Costello not looking to score the basketball on the block, so not sure why you want to put him in a position where he's not comfortable. It was a good move, but you can see here the grab, and all of a sudden Adrian Payne quickly right back into the game. I don't know if I've ever seen this this much substitution. He's in, done in that. The first couple of minutes, obviously with the foul trouble. I think but Steve, back and forth. Yeah, but but Izzo's done that, and he's actually done it in the turn where he's taken both really Valentine, or I should say Dawson and Payne out early, not to for extended periods, just buying minutes. He's just trying to buy minutes, getting quick blows and then get him right back into the game. Brandon Dawson picked up that foul for the Michigan State Spartans who have won back-to-back -back games for the first time since January. Oh! oh, my goodness. Gary Harris. Well, turnovers are going to be an issue, and if Michigan State can turn Michigan over, that's what can happen. Now, in their second matchup, Michigan had just three turnovers the entire game. And Michigan State, as a result, was really not able to get out and run. Michigan has beaten Michigan State twice this season. It's shot by Levert. Rebound by Dawson, who's been terrific on the glass and appling the other way. The you know, Spartans have won back-to-back -back games for the first time since January. Wolverines have won seven consecutive. Payne, pickpocketed by Robinson. Shot clock at 15. There is the pain. Bielfeld knocks it away. Nice terrific, defense. Yeah, terrific defense there. And great help defense by Glenn Robinson from the baseline. Walt. <laughs> he's had two big shots. One from on top and one down low. And he's really just consistently gotten better over the course of the season. And hitting that first three-pointer, Steve, I think has given him a lot more confidence to be in attack mode. Valentine picked up his first. Michigan has won six of the last eight meetings with Michigan State. So Payne goes back to the bench. You know, it's interesting. They've gone into the post for Payne three times, but all three have just been straight post-ups. No movement offensively, so Michigan has been able to just sit on that play. I'd like to see the Spartans try to move Michigan's defense around before they get the ball down on the block. And Costello back in. Yeah, Costello back in. You can even see that Payne's a little bit winded. Harris the miss, Robinson the rebound. Harris has started one of three. Michigan State one of five. Three of four start for Michigan. Robinson, rebound, Payne, make it uh, Valentine. But even though they didn't make that shot, a pretty good job in transition in terms of defense by Michigan. Appling gets the offensive board. Something Dawson's been very good at for the Spartans. Well, he's, this is the first time he's played in this season series against Michigan. And it's a, really a, a huge factor because of his versatility defensively. Grinding and fighting too. It's just a little too strong. And that's the one thing, the, the ability to play post defense really starts before the post entry. Not a good job on that possession by Michigan. Robinson picks up his first. This is Brandon Dawson, who's shooting 70% from the floor in the Big Ten Tournament. chance to face them again it doesn't get any better than this guys yeah fourth of july and christmas so we expect a lot of fireworks and a present that present is the big oh, 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 10 oh, what oh, what oh, title oh. zach urban has come in robinson will take a breather that was just horrible <laughs> he's been waiting all day yeah, for wait. that line <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> she said it <laughs> approaching five minutes gone here in the first half stauskas is the Big Ten player of the year. Throws it away. Price is in around Walton. Picked up by Harris. Valentine. Price. 
Rice, a terrific three-point shooter. Yeah, one of the best in the Big Ten, about 45%. And how about the job defensively, though, by Walden Jr. not giving up on that turnover and thwarted that layup attempt by Price. Michigan State already three offensive rebounds. Dawson, shot clock down to 10. Harris. He's kind of the forgotten guy in this game. The leading scorer, it's hard to think that way, but Gary Harris has had a big game this year. He had 27 in one of the matchups earlier this season. And you're probably looking at arguably the two best off guards in college basketball when you talk about Gary Harris and Nick Stockton. Beal fell, missing. That was only the 19th shot he's taken all season. Valentine. Harris, a fourth offensive rebound. Well, that's going to be an issue all day because Michigan State is the stronger team. They have matchup advantages, especially down there with Dawson on the block. And, and also when Payne comes back into the ballgame. And that's a huge advantage. If you can now get some consistency from Brandon Dawson on the block in terms of his post-up, that's two possessions where he scored with his back to the basket. That's not necessarily what he's noted for. He's more of the energy guy for this team. Irvin, that was over Valentine. Rebound by Bielfeldt. Walton sneaks it inside, and Irvin. Michigan 3 of 7. Walton his first miss. Rebound Costello. Six of the seven field goal attempts. Now actually seven of the eight for Michigan have all been three-pointers. So they're getting nothing inside. Michigan State controlling the paint. Price and Walton jumps on him. Here comes Valentine. Top 11 and rebounding and assists in the conference. 7-0 run by Michigan State. Costello lost the ball. Bielfeldt was in there defending. And both teams early on pretty good defensively. Here's a situation where the defense is good, just better offense. Is Harris able to create just enough space to get off that mid-range jumper. But this is just the size and strength advantage that Michigan State has. I, seemingly at every position, Greg. I mean, Harris, one of the strongest guards in the country. You saw that little push-off. But he doesn't have to extend his arm because of that body strength. That's how he's able to get away with it. But to me, that's the big story in this game. The, the physical strength of Michigan State. And can Michigan turn it into more of a game of skill and finesse? Stouts gives over Harris. Rebound pulled down by Appling. Spike Albrecht is now in at the guard. Price. Harris, three. And that's an example there. The transition three. And, and we saw a little bit of this yesterday. Michigan State's getting a little bit better quality of shot here in the first eight minutes of this game than is the case for Michigan. Morgan is back in the contest. LaVert's on top. Michigan has missed their last five shots from the floor. Twelve to play in the first half. Pickpocketing Harris. They'll sail in. And really, Steve, that's a perfect example of the strength you just talked about with that matchup of Stauskas and Harris. Great lateral quickness, but also the strength to hold the position and not create the foul. Gary Harris making a statement on that play. 12-0 run. Bust twice, once by five, once by nine to the Wolverines this year. Well, Brandon Dawson didn't play in either matchup. And then you just think about the, the toll that all these injuries take on a team. It's not just one guy being out. It's the chain reaction, what it does to your defense, what it does to your rotation. But today, this will be the fifth consecutive game that Michigan State has had its starters together. And you can see they're finally coming together. Stauskas again. That's the first field goal for the Wolverines, Greg, in almost four and a half minutes. And it's been really the recipe for them thus far early on, the three-point shot. There's a foul. That goes on Payne. And that's the first on him. Michigan, Michigan State fighting for the Big Ten title on Selection Sunday. Or the concern should be for the SEC is just the fact that that conference is on a downward spiral right now I, I don't see anybody other than Tennessee right and Kentucky with a chance at that at, at large big and there, there are players down in that part of the country oh, yeah I mean, there's, there's players and Tennessee had a good tournament but getting the, the win over South Carolina and then playing Florida tough yes the committee saw that yesterday I think Tennessee gets in Irvin Stauskas Morgan Robinson Albrecht the five for the Wolverines 
Approaching 11 to play in the first half. Irvin, Stauskas, and Trice is on it. It's a foul on Trice. You know, Kevin, it's obvious that John Beeline in the timeout implored his guys to move the ball. That was the first possession where we've seen really five or six passes from Michigan, and yet it ended up with nothing. Finally, Trice fouling Albrecht, but Michigan State's defense on point, Griff. That's the first on Trice. It, it's very good. The, the question, though, if you're at Michigan now, you're going to have to make the adjustment. You need the great ball movement, but then we need penetration because you're not just going to move it around the perimeter now that Michigan State seems to have that intensity level and that connection defensively. Two on Stauskas. Travel on Morgan. And so it goes back to the Spartans. Tracy? Is it right? That's exactly what John Beeline was talking about in the huddle. He wanted to see more ball movement, but defensively he wanted to make sure that they get back quicker in transition, especially on Gary Harris, guys. You know, the interesting thing about ball movement is it's not just moving it to get shots. It's moving it to create angles to attack off the dribble because you get the defense in rotation, and that's the next level of that ball movement that Michigan needs in this game. It's Trice over Albrecht. Oh, tough shot. Michigan State has shot 7 of 14 to start the game. Halfway through the first half here in Indianapolis. Stauskas and Robinson. Dawson defending. And that is a rugged defender. He picks up the foul. Dawson. This Number two. Is, this is really good defense here from Michigan. Spike Albrecht closes out, stays with his man, Trice. Challenges the shot, but look at that. Just that little step back creating just enough space for that high arcing jumper. Beautifully done. Michigan is the best shooting team in the Big Ten. They shoot 48% from the floor, the best shooting three-point team, the best free-throw shooting team. Robinson at the line. Bracket games are now open. Create your group or compete against the nation for a trip to next year's Final Four. Join now at cbsports.com slash brackets. Kevin Harlan, Steve Kerr, Greg Anthony, Tracy Wilson. On Selection Sunday. Kevin, you rattled off those numbers from Michigan. Spectacular offensive statistics. What's surprising, if you haven't really watched Michigan State, they're just behind Michigan yes. in, in all those numbers. And, but they can augment that, that offense with this physical defense and rebounding. And now that they're whole, you said this yesterday, Greg, as Payne knocks down the jumper, they might be the scariest team in the entire field. They, they very well may be. And you see here, again, the emphasis and, and again, the versatility, not just back to the basket, then able to face up. And that whistle's blown on that play because of that right there, folks. If you're, you're not going to be allowed to touch the elbow once a shooter is in the motion. And so he's rewarded with the shot and the foul. So Morgan picks up his second. Stauskas will take a breather. Levert comes back in. The difference, too, with better offense from the Spartans, we know they're the number one defensive team in the conference. Yeah, when they have everything going, like they've shown the last couple of days, it's, it's impressive. And what you're seeing right now is Michigan, one of the best offensive clubs in the country, struggling just to find an open look. And that's rare. This is a, this is a finely tuned machine that John Beeline has built. It is, but you know the, the little metric I, I like to use is freeze threes and keys. <laughs> Free throws, turnovers, and three-point shots. And that's a great equalizer, even though physically Michigan State may be a little better. If Michigan can get the turnovers and win that battle, and look at John Beeline, I don't think he's very happy with how his team is playing. I think that's more about trying to rally his group and give them some confidence because right now, Michigan State's hitting them in the mouth. He wanted to push off right here on Appling with that off arm on Albrecht, and he didn't get it. And remember, we saw Bo Ryan go right at the officials at halftime yesterday. And I think it had an effect. It, it allowed it absolutely Wisconsin did. to find an edge. I, and I think you're right. I think John Beeline is trying to get his team going right now and create some kind of an edge because they're on their heels. Beeline just picked up the team. We saw it. Michigan State is at the last six consecutive shots. Trice is at the line. And the lead for the Spartans builds to 10. And, you know, I, I didn't. You could absolutely make a call there on the push up. There's no doubt about that. But I, I will tell you this momentum is a part of every facet of the game. And I truly believe officials referee momentum as well. In essence, when they feel that one team is more aggressive, they tend to get the benefit 
of calls that can go either way. Walton comes in. Albrecht will sit for the Wolverines. And here comes Stauskas. He'll replace Zach Irvin. And, of course, with both Horford and Morgan with two fouls, you've got Bielfeld back on the, on the floor midway through the first half. So this is a disaster for John Beeline just in terms of having to deal with this strong, physical Michigan State team and his two strongest players in foul trouble. Michigan State has outscored Michigan 21-5 to over the last six minutes. We're under nine to play in the first half. Walt. And this time, Valentine is on him. The triple. And a foul. What's well, good for the goose? <laughs> it's good for the gander. <laughs> Similar play to what we saw Payne get earlier. Valentine seemed to get him just on that wrist as he's going up. Valentine Stauskas. picks up his second foul. Yeah, that's a better. Oh, that's a great call. That's that absolutely goal. a foul. How about that stroke? I mean, yeah. off the dribble. That's what we didn't see a lot of from Stauskas last year with Hardaway and Burke dominating the offense. But because of the departure of those two, Stauskas really forced into the role of becoming more of a playmaker than a creator. And he's done beautifully. Valentine on the bench with the two fouls. Michigan, the youngest team in the Big Ten, fighting against Michigan State. Hole and starting the same lineup for the fifth consecutive game. His shot there. Up and in, Kaminsky. That might have been the best execution we've seen from Michigan State in the half court. A veer pick. They had Michigan rotating all over the place, and that got them scattered. And that's what happens. Offensive rebounds, once you force those rotations, that's a major factor for this, this Michigan State team. Alvin Ellis has checked in for the Spartans. Bielfeld sets the screen. And Stowski is trying to get a little action with him. And Bielfeld's got a roll on that pick and roll. He's not a threat on the perimeter. And he really bails out Michigan State's defense by staying out beyond the three-point line. Freshman Alvin Ellis picks up the foul for the Spartans, who lead at 27-18. That should just about do it. Excuse me? Hey, it forces the defense to have five guys sink down to the level. And the other thing it does is it keeps you out of transition which right now is something I think Michigan needs because Michigan State has a really good rhythm of how to defend them in the half court, especially when you don't have Horford or Morgan in the game who just instinctively know how to play. That's my point about Bielfeld, not rolling, not forcing Michigan State to have to honor is really allowing them to squeeze on the perimeter game of Michigan. It's interesting, you watch Michigan State and it, they almost mirror their football team this year. Mark D'Antonio, his squad beating Stanford in the road boat, but they would just beat you up physically. They pound you. And it, it, there's a psychological advantage. There's Clinton Antonio made the trip down. And he and Tom Izzo very close. But it, it's a similar style in terms of when you're physical in any sport. But when you're physical and you can deliver the blow, there's kind of psychological damage that's done as well. And it allows your team to really kind of take hold of the game. One thing you were talking about, though, Greg, about the rhythm and how they can control it. With the big man or big men down low, you get that ball in there. That's how you can control the rhythm a lot, too. It's much like in football. It's, you know, a great paint presence is like having a great running game. It's a, it allows you, in essence, to control the line of scrimmage. And that's what allows you to control tempo in basketball. Yes. Gary Harris, the sophomore from Fishers, Indiana. He was the Mr. Basketball in Indiana. He's got a quick 11 points right now for the Spartans. And Steve, your point about the toughness and the physicality, that also equates to mental toughness. <laughs> Speaking of toughness, when Adrian Payne earlier this year, I think set the all-time did record for Michigan State. It's not just one end of the floor that this young man is going to have an impact on the game. Uh, Beeline finally found a matchup he liked, which was Glenn Robinson on Kaminsky. And he did get the penetration that he needed, but Payne with a perfect rotation and block. Levert. And Payne aggressively takes it off the ball. And again, how about that play? Payne guards Levert on the perimeter and still able to get back in and control that defensive backboard. Michigan State is plus nine on the glass today. Plus nine rebounded. Approaching seven to play. The drive by the freshman. 
That is how Vanilla out of Madison, Illinois. And, and we talked about that paint presence again. Three ways you attack it, either, either the post, the pass, or in that case, the penetration. But they have, are continuing to attack the rim. One note on Ellis, he played against Michigan early in the season at 12 points. Not a guy that sees a ton of minutes for the Spartan team. With a good basket right there. Stauskas trying to get free. Double foul. And that's the situation there. Stauskas really not able to get the rhythm he wants in terms of attacking. He's more than just a three-point shooter, but the attention being paid there. Easy call. Easy, Easy call. Decision. Unfortunate, though, from Michigan State standpoint. But that's something that also Michigan needs to get to the free throw line. That's another way to get your rhythm offensively. Well, from the creator of the Big Bang Theory, Anna Ferris and Alice and Jenny star in a new episode of Mom. It's tomorrow at 9.30, 8.30 Central, only CBS. This is what great shooters will do to a defense. You become so nervous about Stauskas knocking down shots that you overextend mm -hmm. on the closeout, and you've got to maintain your discipline. Remember, Tom Izzo told us before the game, Stauskas made three impossible threes in their second matchup. Paul and Ruda is Barrett's watching the game. It's the second time, by the way, Stauskas has been fouled trying to take a three. A little extension here with the 1-3-1. One, one. Nice tip. Another interception. Levert. Walton. Stauskas. Slapped out there by Horford and keeps it alive as John Beeline continues to rotate the big man and keeping him fresh, but also keep him eligible in the game. Michigan shooting 33% from the floor. Well, look at Payne's wow. quick feet staying in Gosh. front of Walton. LaVert. Payne is there to grab the loose ball. Well, that's just a huge luxury to have with your bigs. And you see what they missed by not having him in Dawson. Great defense there by Michigan. Knocked away by Ellis. He'll pick up the foul. A couple of freshmen going at it. Walton starting. Freshman. Watch Adrian Payne's footwork against one of the quicker guards in the Big Ten. This is why NBA scouts love paying the ability, ability to switch out on pick and roll on a guard and stay in front and stay disciplined. That was brilliant defense. Ellis picks up his second. Now we've got Derek Walton Jr. at the free throw line. His dad was a high school coach at Chandler Parkland. The three-time Class B First team all state selection. Trice will check back in. Ellis will leave. He was the Michigan Gatorade High School Player of the Year. Derek Walton. And, and even though this is a game over the first 14 minutes or so that Michigan State has controlled, Michigan's right there. You know, especially with how explosive they can be offensively and the threat of the three pointer, you cannot relax at all if you're the Spartans. Late January, Michigan State came into the tournament losing 7 of 12, but they won two in a row. Everybody is healthy. Same lineup for five consecutive games. First time that's happened. And they have become suddenly very dangerous. Shot clock at 9. With the lead at 7. And the clock at 5-10. Trice. Horford defends. Trice. Oh, oh, wow. oh my goodness. <laughs> He just cracked a little smile there. He's still <laughs> smiling. That had to be fun. A great awareness of the clock, too, because he really utilized the entire shot clock to get to a point where he could release that shot and still convert. Walton tried to throw it, deflected, and then the breakaway for Apple. And that activity level, Steve, defensively, is really impressive from the Spartans here. In this first half, Michigan State has scored. Those numbers right there, that bench scoring says a lot. You know, and with that's the silver lining to the dark cloud for Michigan State in terms of all the injuries. It's the ability for Tom Izzo to have developed a trust and given a lot of confidence to guys like Travis Price and, and Schilling and Costello because they've gotten quality minutes and it allows for their teammates to trust them in big moments. And in this tournament, they've been delivered. Stouch gets picked up by Harris in the three. Schilling trying to get the ball picked up inside by the smallest man on that Michigan side, Walton. 
So Walton has scored well as the starting point. He's got nine. Back to the 1-3-1 one, one for John Beeline. He did this a lot yesterday against Ohio State. Very effective in keeping the Buckeyes off balance. One thing about a 1-3-1, one, 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 if you can attack the elbow, lobs opposite are always available. Horford zipping around Chile and gets that miss by Trice. Another four to play in the first half. Stowski is looking for Horford. Digs and turns and knocked away by Schilling. Saved by Trice. Picked up by Eplin. Here come the Spartans. Here is the three. Schilling inside, trying to get the ball. Shot by Horford. CBS on Monday, April 7th. It's been a long time since Michigan State has looked this good. And Steve doing it with easy points this afternoon against Michigan. Oh, just dominating the interior, Kevin. 14 to 4 in terms of points in the lane. And the rebounding total 17 to 9 in favor of Michigan State. They've controlled everything. But as we always talk about, you know, final few minutes of the half, just trying to close things out. If you're Michigan, you can force a couple turnovers, get maybe a couple transition threes. And now it's, you know, it's a three, five point game. So this next few minutes, I think very important, particularly for Michigan. Coming up next will be the Selection Sunday show. We all sit around, watch, and try then to put together our charts. And Greg, you began the broadcast today saying Michigan State is about as dangerous a team going into the tournament as you can see. I think really are. And, and as is the case with Michigan, we, we know how explosive they can be. But when you've gone through what Michigan State has, sometimes you forget just how good they are. Preseason, I thought they were the team to beat nationally and, and definitely a team that would get to the final four and now they're starting to show signs of that here now so russell bird has checked in for michigan state he started 10 games in his career shot clock here at 14. field fell outside twice with the rebound another rebound for michigan state well, the scary thing, I think, is Michigan State's just one for seven from the three-point line, and they've had some good looks, so well, they start knocking those down to add to that inside power. They, they can blow this thing open. And the, the other telling sign in this game, Michigan actually out-rebounded Michigan State the first two times they met. You see the difference now at full street. They're plus eight on the backboard. Tries with the miss. Heels up, tries to reel it in. Schilling comes up with it. Fresh shot clock with which to work. Michigan had an early five-point lead. Michigan State's big lead has been 11. Here's the sixth leading score in the Big Ten. Gary Harris. Two and a half to play in the half. Michigan crowd wanted to travel there on Harris. Gene Steratore points to the floor as if to say he kept his pivot foot down. With another offensive rebound. Again, we talked about the impact of the bench. Schilling's come in and gotten three offensive rebounds here in the last two minutes they don't convert but those are still possessions that you have to extend energy defensively nine offensive rebounds for the spartans two to play lavert wheeling in it was that play a moment ago when gary harris drives baseline does he leave the floor or not right here nope no, he, he kept his right foot down and look, and you see the official right there right on top of it that's a terrific job and then chilling the freshman just loses the angle chilling's really good looking freshman you can't believe he's a freshman you see that body he's strong but he's got to learn angles on the screen well, particularly against a team like michigan it's so potent Schilling picks up his first and the other issue for Schilling. He doesn't utilize the athletic ability because he's still in the process of having to think about everything he does on the floor. You're far more athletic when you play the game on instincts. Trice and Albrecht, who just checked in, is over there. Payne grabbing the ball. Michigan State has missed their last six shots. 138 to play in the first half. Title game of the Big Ten. Payne chiseling and can't get it. Bielfeldt was defending. It is off the Spartan. It goes back to the Wolverines and coming up on the at and at the half. Greg, Clark, Doug, and Seth will have the latest on who's in and who's out as we get closer to the selection show. Plus Louisville head coach Rick Pitino and player of the year candidate Russ Smith will join the guys who talk repeat. It's all coming up on the at and at the half from our CBS studio. Exactly what Steve talked about a few minutes ago. This is a seven-point game. You're able to get a score and a stop here. 
and keep it in single digits, if you're Michigan, you're going to feel a lot better about yourself in a half that Michigan State has owned. Michigan is only shooting, Steve, 33%. They've never found a rhythm, but they are hanging around here at a late shot clock for Albrecht. Over Applin. Rebound Payne. He grabs another one for the Spartans. Payne is also four. You know, the other interesting thing about this, and Angelo's probably going to go for a timeout. We'll get to it after. Seconds to play in the first half from Indianapolis. That's a huge difference psychologically going into the half. And psychologically is the point, more so than the actual score, just mentally the confidence either side's going to gain based on how this next 49 and a half seconds play out. Oh, my goodness. It whistled right by Russell Bird. Fifth turnover for the Spartans. And that's a tough play, but if you're Russell Bird, just getting into the game on a, a set play and from the reaction of Keith Applin, he was clearly out of position on that possession. I, I watched Tom Izzo after the play and he said to Applin, you can't throw it to him. You can't throw it to him. I think the play was going elsewhere. And Bird, as you said, just got into the mm -hmm. ball game. He's not ready to catch and shoot that one. Difference of eight seconds, game clock and shot clock. Michigan State is shooting 46%. 32% now down for the Wolverines who have shot so well in the first couple games here in Indy. Shot clock at six. Levert. Ellis is on him. He'll fill with the screen. Switch. Pain. Travel. <laughs> Just like that. See, both teams with the turnover. I, I thought Levert had a chance to jump. To Just jump, jump into right him and into create the contact. Once he left his feet. Watch this right here. And Let's see, does he travel? Yes. Yeah. Picked up his left foot. Gene's territory all over both of those plays. Fantastic officiating. Final seconds now with the first half. Harris, Robinson on Oh, what a move. Oh, whoa. Oh, my goodness. goodness. And Glenn Robinson the third took a huge risk in going for that steal. Ooh. Created that lane for Gary Harris. Had what a lot of bad move. intentions on that one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Talk about a psychological blow going into the half. Not a Officiate. No, you go, Kev. You go. You're looking <laughs> at me. I mean, oh, yeah. he said it all. Well, all right. <laughs> Let's talk about now. Yeah. Halftime lead for Michigan State, but losses in the first two games. Well, but that's because they, they didn't have their full complement of players. And now that they're back, we're seeing what they can really do. We're seeing why they were preseason number one in many polls. For Michigan, they've got to find a way to get this rhythm offensively back. I mean, they're, they're a brilliant offensive team, but it's all dependent on flow. And Michigan State has taken them out of that flow. So they've got to get some transition hoops and get great ball movement and player movement to, to try to create that rhythm they're looking for. And to your point, they shot 31% in the first half. That is the worst field goal percentage they've had since they played Charlotte back in November in a game they lost. This first half, in essence, they shot the same thing. Michigan State starts the second half with Valentine and Payne along with Gary Harris. Dawson is out there. And at the point, they've got Ampel. It's the Spartan five. Morgan, Stauskas, Levert, Robinson, Walton Jr., the Wolverine five. Left-handed jump hook. And, and also, Steve, you go back to early in that first half, the foul trouble for Horford and Morgan really changed the game. We talked about this yesterday with Michigan. Those guys, statistically, they don't impact the game, but they understand how Michigan plays, and their perimeter players play off them with a lot more confidence and efficiency. Levert and Walton. Valentine got it. Morgan took it away, and there is a foul. With an 11 point lead for Michigan State to Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, Tom Izzo left the court at half after that Gary Harris dunk, saying, That's what I'm talking about. But he still sees room for improvement. He told me he wants to driv dribble dive a little bit more and get pain deeper in the post, guys. Valentine just picked up his third. He will exit, and Trice will take his place. That helps Michigan big time because Valentine is part of that physical defense we've talked about. Trice much smaller, obviously. And you take away a little bit of the strength on the wings, 
you may find some of those cuts and screens for Michigan happen a little bit easier. Brandon Dawson. And Levert's got the ball in the second half. So the first two meetings with these two teams, Michigan has outscored them by 22. It's right there by Walton Jr. Let's see if they've got that same feel here in the Big Ten title game. Another turnover for the Michigan Wolverines. Seven. Appling missed some time with a wrist injury. Payne missed nine games. Miss games by Dawson, he missed nine. Now they're all back, Hale and Hardy, and ready to go. And the Spartans with the lead and a three from Eplin. And front four and claimed by Dawson to Payne. Well, that's an example of the strength right there. The will just stronger from Dawson on that possession, outworking Robinson to get that loose ball and then Payne with the emphatic finish. Dowskis, three defenders around him. Another rebound. And Dawson again. Michigan has missed their last seven consecutive shots. Dawson, what a move. What a move. And again, Steve, those plays there happen because of the way they space and transition. You have to honor that perimeter shot. And Dawson shows you why this team is so special. A 6 nothing start to the second half for the Spartans. Now loose balls, rebounds. Hustle plays, beautiful feed here to Payne, and then defense to offense, converting from one end to the other, Dawson with the finish. The Volkswagen Passat TDI Clean Diesel can go 795 highway miles on a... This tweet just out from the selection committee that they're working off two contingencies right now. Kevin, I'd say they're sitting around waiting to see what happens in Indianapolis. We agree, Greg, and there is our countdown to the selection show. An hour and ten away is we are back in Indianapolis, Florida, a very veteran team. The SEC certainly, and here comes the veteran, Dawson. Oh! <laughs> Whoa! And you see all the Michigan State players slapping the ground in unity. In unison, I should say. We talked about yesterday, Steve, when they put on a clinic against Wisconsin. Schilling knocks away the shot by Robinson. They're duplicating it here today. Michigan State has scored following all eight Michigan turnovers. You know, listening to that sound, the sound of the dunk was great, but the sound of both play Michigan State players diving on the yeah. floor, that's what Tom Izzo will show to his players later. What led to that play was back-to-back -back dives for loose balls, and then look at this. My goodness. Whoa. Two fouls. Ampling picks it up. Good spin move by Morgan. Her 38th game playing in a Michigan uniform today. All-time school record. And that breaks. Revealed a drop for the Spartans, or rather for the Wolverines in five minutes and 40 seconds from the floor. Going back to the first half. Levert. Numbers. Good spin. Bad pass. A great transition defense. Sixteen to play and Price the other way. And, and, and although this game feels like it's out of hand, it's it's really a, a ton of time left in this game for a team as as explosive as Michigan is from an offensive standpoint. I, I would feel more comfortable if I see some open shots yeah. coming from Michigan. Everything's so difficult. They haven't really shown signs that they're going to climb back in. Dawson six to five, defended by Robinson. Yeah, you, you can see the shoulders even starting to slump. Yeah. A little bit for Michigan right now. Michigan State is shooting 52%. Michigan is shooting 26%. Robinson. And he has struggled. Two points today. And his first hit, he's one of five. So Robinson's got four. Lavert's got five. He normally is in double figures. And Skowskis at 13. He's three of eight. The number I'm looking at. Just 14 two-point attempts for Michigan, 28 for Michigan State. Mm. Double dribble there for Schilling. So the inside power. 
CBS Sports coverage of NCAA men's basketball will continue after this match. And he said you have a start, a finish, and obstacles in between. That became his theme for the weekend, and this is the final hurdle they have to overcome, guys. Well, think of this. The 13 of the 18 Big Ten games that Michigan State played, they were without their full allotment of players. They've used 15 different lineups. 11 different Spartans have started a game, but now they've gone with a handful of games, same group, and it's beginning to show, and at the right time of the year. And, and you know, if we're going to talk about Michigan State's injury, we should probably mention Mitch McGarry. I mean, yeah. he was going to be the best player on this Michigan team in terms of its returnees, and this loss just changed everything. Now, they've adapted beautifully, but you see they really miss his physical presence inside. Well, Morgan, the screen, LaVert. Moves by Kaminsky. There's Mitch McGarry, the all preseason All-America with back surgery in January out for the year. And, and one reason why he doesn't get the same mention in terms of the impact he obviously would bring to the table for Michigan is because he hasn't played at all during the course of the Big Ten season. So this is the team that Michigan knew they'd have once Big Ten play started, and they were still able to be the best team in the conference. Turnover, Trice knocked it down. The floater and the feed. What a play from Trice. Perfect pass, just read that little four on three advantage. Beautiful. Payne, wonderful numbers again with 11 points and five rebounds for the Spartans. Robinson trying to free himself. Stauskas stuck on 13. Payne with another rebound. Stauskas has really been forced into some difficult shots. Michigan State staying right inside of him and forcing him to put the ball on the floor and then helping from all angles. Looks like Gary Harris came up limping a little bit. Ellis will take his place. Harris, the top scorer, will take a seat. Spike Albrecht comes in for the Wolverines. So Ellis out there. Valentine comes back in the game for Trice. Payne. They have Kaminsky down low. And Appling, the Spartan five. Payne a screen, some switching, and Valentine. Kaminsky's a great three-point shooter. And Appling on the wing. Valentine, the triple. Albrecht's got it, and he's off to the races for the Wolverines. And Michigan under 30% shooting for the game. And four of 17 from the three-point line. That's, that's what they do. That link comes up nicely on Stauskas. Kaminsky is watching the shooter. Valentine with another rebound. It has just been a struggle offensively for it. I mean, you can see it's just the same, not the same level of confidence. You know, they're playing about a quarter to a half step slower than they typically yeah. do because of that, that lack of confidence. Payne with Albrecht defending. Well, that was... Oh. <laughs> Not sure what that was. Now that was not the shot, even though he can make threes that you want to see him attempt. Zach Irvin. That's a three for the Wolverines. And and he's a guy, today, only their fifth. I'm sorry about that, Tim, but he's a guy that can get going offensively. And that's the beauty of the three-pointer. All it takes is a two-minute stretch where you can stem the tide and turn the table a little bit and get yourself back into this game. Irvin's points, the first bench points for Michigan today. Payne inside, Stauskas defending. Morgan effectively down the lane, but the shot wouldn't go. Payne's got 13 points on 10 shots. Then around the rim, rebounding and doing that for the Spartans on top in the Big Ten title game. All right. It's to get out and go. In fact, you look at the numbers today. 
18 points off turnovers for Michigan State. Zero for Michigan. That's been the whole game, really, is just the ability to get out and turn your defense into great offense. Great part of the story, the last nine field goals for the Spartans have come in the paint. And that's the other issue, 30 to 10, the difference. And that gets back to really what's been the theme of this game, just how much more physical Michigan State has been, particularly on the perimeter with their ability to contain in the half court and contest the three-point shots. They have looked into the tournament, Steve, but they have got a swagger now through these three games they've played here. You know, they got their rhythm, they got their confidence. LeBert gets the jumper to go. But assuming Michigan State can finish this off and win the Big Ten tournament, they're going to have a ton of swagger and confidence next weekend. LeBert's got seven. Yeah, LeBert showing some signs here. And again, it's a, still just a 12-point game, even though it doesn't seem like much is going right for Michigan. Ampling, Costello, Horford knocked it away. Shot clock continues to tick. Dawson. Ellis tried to answer basket interference. Goes back to the Wolverines tonight on 60 Minutes. Drones are operating all over America. What are they doing? More than you ever imagined. That's tonight on 60 Minutes. Tom Izzo was yelling at Costello past the ball. He got an offensive rebound. He had a teammate wide open in the corner for an open three. Often the best type of three-point shot to get. Costello just a little too aggressive trying to score on his own. Albrecht. Stauskas. See here, just inadvertent, but again, it doesn't make it feel any better. <laughs> no. <laughs> One thing about the defense of Michigan State, guys, is that in the previous five games heading into the tournament, they were allowing 71 points and 48% from the floor. In this tournament, they have now been allowing just 41% from the field and only 63 points. Well, that's, that goes back to the rhythm of the game that you need to find with your teammates. It's not just at the yeah. offensive end. It's, it's defensively, too. You've got to get your rhythm, getting your rotations in order, getting everybody on a string. Uh, that's exactly what we've seen here the last couple of days. And speaking of five games, this is the first time all season where they've had their starting five play five consecutive games. So that kind of speaks to what you talked about. But again, Michigan, I keep harping on it, but nine, almost nine and a half minutes to go, and as explosive as they can be, all it takes is a little bit of a letdown mentally for Michigan State. And keep in mind, Gary Harris has not returned since he left with that injury. We don't know how significant that is. Lavert with the miss. Payne got it. Once he goes on the ninth turnover by the Michigan State Spartans. Nine by Michigan. Applin, Albrecht down. Appling, Payne, the three. Picked up by Ellis. Look out, here comes Payne as he goes crashing into Horford. Well, Tracy, we're just talking about uh, Gary Harris. What's the update? Well, that's right. He banged his left shoulder on a screen earlier, and he has a little bit of a dead arm. I was told they're just going to keep him on the bench, wait and see approach, guys. That's all they need. Huh? They're finally yeah, healthy. Exactly. Finally in a groove. And Gary Harris, maybe their best player, certainly one of their top two with pain. He's first team all Big Ten. He's the sixth leading scorer in the conference. He leads his team in scoring at 17 points a game. Horford just picked up number four. And I think Harris sets the tone defensively and with his strength. I mean, we talk about the physical nature of Dawson and Payne, and you can see it, but you know, Harris up close, when you see him just manhandle people without fouling, a little bit like Aaron Kraft, it's impressive to watch. Free throw shooting in the game has been good by both teams. Michigan State 8 of 9 and Michigan 11 of 12. You know, we talked a lot, too, about as, as Horford checks out with his four foul, but we talk a lot about fatigue in situations like this. If you look at Levert and Salskis, yes, they played three consecutive games, but over the course of the season, they played, coming into this game, a combined 160 minutes against Michigan State. They'd only been out of the game for seven minutes. Mm. And with the way they play, because most of what they generate particularly in the half court, comes from Stauskas and Levert. 
That puts a lot of pressure on you when you're not getting anything easy in terms of your offense. Morgan is just checked in for Michigan. Robinson in to Dawson. Just two of seven now for Robinson. But beautiful move there. They, they really need him. You, you always feel like with Michigan that Robinson's sort of the X factor. When he brings it, they are really tough to beat. Payne has got 10. Dawson has six. All 16 of Michigan State's points in the second half. Payne again. The spin on Morgan. Seven forty-five. Title game of the Big Ten. Michigan State has turned the corner. Look at that that highlight package we just saw. Not a single catch and shoot. Yeah. Nothing in rhythm. Everything has been off the dribble, trying to beat Michigan State's defense one on one. And that's because everything else has been taken away from Michigan in terms of its half court rhythm and, and offense. So once the play breaks down. Stauskas has to go one-on-one. -on -one. That's a lot to ask. It is. And think about yesterday. Whenever things got tough, they were able to create turnovers and get out in transition and get something easy to kind of break the ice. Not the case today. Zero points off the turnovers. The dive by Stauskas. The rebound by Morgan. Ripped away by Payne, who continues to make his presence felt. Nine rebounds. 15 points by Adrian Payne. Morgan is out there on Payne. Walton is on Appling. Stauskas is on Valentine. Lavert is watching Dawson. Robinson is on Trice. Appling, three. And that is off the hands of Lavert. They're now one for 15 from the three-point line. A lot of good looks, too. And that one coming just because of Payne's ability to step out and make a three it forces the rotation but imagine if these guys were hitting their threes well they're the leading three-point team in the big ten they are but they've also shown the day the versatility because of their ability to own the interior that plus 16 difference in the paint and then also the points off turnovers so that's been the two areas where they've been able to offset the fact that they haven't been good from the three. Michigan State made a school record, single season school record, three, 257 this year. Valentine, twice, good fake, Bolton bit. And it's caught by Robinson. No need for a step back there if he tries to step in, take the little 15 footer. He made that much more difficult than it had to be. Good pass, Levert, Morgan right there. Yeah, that's a ton of time, and that's an example there. In, in transition, Levert and Stauskas, the one area they haven't been as good is facilitating. Most of their drives have been to get shots up. I think that's another area that they can look to have some success with their penetration, forcing help, and finding teammates. Greg Michigan State has been without a field goal for five and a half minutes. And it, it almost coincides with the amount of time that Gary Harris has been out of the game. Back to this 1-3-1. One, one. Now Dawson will have a guard on him, so plenty of room down there. You call it, Steve, and Valentine with the feed. Yeah, great pass. Good recognition from Valentine. And John Beeline just trying to mix up his defenses again to keep this team off balance, but you're always exposed on the back line when you go with that 1-3-1. One, one. Five and a half to play in the half, and getting away was Applin. He thought he had a clean steal. That is a foul. And to your point, the, the soft spot in all zones is going to be the interior. If you can have a big who's a good decision maker, which is the case for Valentine here, nice find and good balance and control there by Dawson. Gary Harris is coming back out. Trice will take his place. Good sign for the Spartans. Yeah, big applause from the Spartan people. You can imagine what they're thinking. If Harris is healthy and playing like he's been the last couple of days, Man, that's no telling where this team could go the next three weeks. Number one seed, Michigan. Number three seed, Michigan State. Morgan, Hall, and John. And that's two consecutive baskets now where Stauskas and Levert have been facilitators. Morgan's got all eight of his points, Greg, in the second half. And primarily because those guys are setting him up. He does a great job of understanding in the offense where he can be effective, setting those screens and then getting his head under the rim. Appling, leaving, oh. driving, what a play! 
Beautiful. Oh, the playmaking of both Harris and Aplin today, along with Valentine, just multiple playmaking perimeter players to go with this power game. The balance of Michigan State, so impressive. Four and a half to go. Stauskas, it just isn't there. Little room to fire, shot is off. He's drawn a lot of attention. Look at this, round the back, <laughs> splitting the double team right over the top of the rotating defender, Robinson. Appling, gorgeous. Valentine just picked up his fourth. Four fouls and helps to check back in, but again now, if you're Michigan, four minutes to go, you get an opportunity here if we can get two points, three or even a three, and then you get an opportunity to extend that defense. I think that's what they're going to have to look to do here in the last four minutes, Steve. Try to extend their pressure a little bit because you know Michigan State's going to want to squeeze the ball and try to take some time off the clock. Stauskas has missed his last eight shots. I, I haven't remembered a single easy one, that's for sure. Yeah, no. LeBert, LeBert goes down hard, draws a foul. Dawson was in there defending along with others. Rugged game. Dawson will pick up number three. Levert to inbound. 4.02 to play. Third meeting, Michigan, Michigan State. The Wolverines on the way to a 15 3 conference record beat Michigan State both times, but Michigan State was not whole. It's the first time they've had every member at their disposal. It's going to be the 1 1 now. 3.54 to go in the second half. The foul is on Ellis, the freshman. He picks up number four. We take a timeout on minutes away. Yeah, and this game still with tremendous significance. A lot of time left for Michigan to make a run. And remember, they're still the ones who control their own destiny, I think, if they were to win today and get that fourth one seed. A lot of people in Virginia probably... Uh, becoming Spartan fans Spartan right fans. about now. What yeah. do you think? I agree. I, I think I think if this score holds, I think Virginia will get that fourth number one seed. Just winning the ACC regular season and conference tournaments, I think that will warrant it. Even if their strength of schedule was not great, particularly with the unbalanced ACC schedule they have. Walton at the free throw line. Michigan has had five double-digit comeback wins this season. Now the final laughs, the final slaps, the final high fives. Only two new episodes left before the How I Met Your Mother series finale. The countdown continues. It's tomorrow at 8, 7 Central. Only CBS, Kevin Harlan, Steve Kerr, Greg Anthony, Tracy Wilson in Indianapolis. Full court pressure. Harris, Valentine, the crash, and the foul. Morgan will pick it up. Morgan. Is defending third tagged on him. And even though Valentine goes to the free throw line here, that's in essence what Michigan wanted. That press, they want to speed the game up. You know, there are three ways you utilize a press. You either want to speed a team up, you want to turn them over, or you want to slow them down. Obviously, in this case, Michigan wants to speed the tempo up to try and create a few more possessions. With Valentine at the strike, Trace, what do you have? Well, that's exactly what Beeline said in that huddle. He said we need to go, go, go offensively, and we need to press, and we have fouls to give, so be aggressive defensively just like they did right there, guys. I still like the way Michigan State approached the press, though. I think you attack pressure, and if you have an advantage, you go, you get a foul, now you become the aggressor. The, the worst thing that can happen is you, you pull the ball out, all of a sudden you run your shot clock all the way down, and you lose the aggressiveness that's gotten you to this point. Levert. Michigan for the game, shooting 32%, and Michigan State firing away at 47% from the contest. Yeah, it's amazing, because that was a possession there where I thought Levert got the shot he wanted, just unable to convert there. But still plenty of time here. Payne's got 15, Harris has 13, Dawson has 13. Touch pass, Payne, the triple. How good is that? Yeah, was How good is that? And, you know, that pick and roll split by Appling set the tone. I was interested to see as well. Michigan State earlier this season against Ohio State had a 20-point lead. And they started playing not to lose and really allowed Ohio State to gain momentum and get back into it. Let's, it looks like they've learned because they're far more aggressive here with the lead than they were in that game. Now Skis gets it with the drive inside. 
That's his first field goal since 8.51 remaining in the first half. But Adrian Payne has been the story for the Spartans with 18 in the game. Michigan State by 12. Watch this play a moment ago. The split of the double team from Napoli. Now look at the ball movement. After all the rotations from Michigan, because of that penetration, and you just find the open man. Get a go from a good shot to a great shot. Applin could have shot it. Harris could have, but Payne had the wide open look. That is beautiful. 13 of Payne's 18 points, Greg, have come here in the second half. And it's interesting also about the impact that Payne has on Applin in the pick and roll. Tom Izzo talked about it. He said it, it hurts Applin's game when you don't have Payne because of his ability to pick and pop as well as roll. And that's why you see that split there, because the defense is really trying to hone in on that three-point shoot. Oh, what a pass. Valentine Dawson. Tom Izzo's wife within the crowd. Kids are there. And the Spartan faithful. 2.20 to go. The three will not fall for Robinson. And I'll tell you what, tough to pressure Michigan State because they've got Valentine, Appling, Gary Harris all capable of handling pressure. As are really Payne and Dawson sure. for their position. They're very good ball handlers. Stauskas picks up the foul. Valentine was making the spin. 2-0-2 to go. Got that pass from Valentine on that pressure release play where yeah. it looked like he was going to throw it to the corner to Harris. That was the obvious play. And he anticipated the play and found Dawson. That was just beautiful. It's like they have multiple point guards on this team. It's not just Appling. Valentine and Harris, they look like point guards as well. You know, it, it, he's probably their best passer at that small forward position. Improved his rebound. You see the no look there. And, you know, we talked a lot about Michigan having a chance at a one. Well, Michigan State's putting forth a pretty good audition potentially for a two seat because you made the point earlier that if this holds, they'll actually have a better overall record on the season than Michigan. And when you factor in the injuries, and that's where I think it'll get interesting from the committee standpoint, where do they weigh that, knowing that those guys are now back and healthy? Morgan picked up his fourth foul. He'll take a seat. Zach Urban has come in. One thing I will say, Greg, is they cannot be a four seed. You can't possibly have a Sweet 16 matchup between one of the top four seeds in the, in the country, say, you know, Arizona, Florida, Wichita State, you can't have one of those teams play Michigan State in the Sweet 16 because I think you're looking at two of the top five teams in the whole country meeting way too early. So minimum a three seed for yeah, Michigan State that, for That's me. a very good point. And, you know, they, even though they've had their struggles and it's been well documented, they still have some quality wins both non-conference as well as conference. They come in with Harris on the side. Appling with the feed. And Michigan State smells blood. First points in the half for him. Well, Dawson and Payne have both gone up for the ball several times together in unison. You know, it'd be interesting to, to, to chart. Uh, teams do this. They chart contested shots versus uncontested shots. For Michigan, they have 51 attempts. Greg, if you had to guess, how many how many uncontested shots for Michigan out of those 50? I would say honestly, probably less than 10 percent. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and that's what happens too. Is again, we, we harp on it, but it's so true about basketball. It's a game of rhythm, and the way you disrupt rhythm is disrupt timing and spacing, and you force the offense to be created by the individual as opposed to the execution of your plays, and that's been the strength of Michigan State in this game. They haven't allowed Michigan, who's the best probably in the country in half court offensive execution, one of the most efficient teams as well, not on display here today in part because of that Spartan defense. Can you think of a team in college basketball that has used their conferences tournament to spin their possibilities around so quickly well, like Michigan State? I mean, Virginia already w was a, a high seed, but by winning the ACC, not only did they Solidify. possibly get a one seed, but what they've done for their program, yes. you know, beating Duke in the final, Tony Bennett trying to build for the future, and it's got to help recruiting. Just the credibility that Virginia has gained by winning the ACC. And, and that, it's great. First time they've won the ACC tournament since 1976, but think about the last few years, UConn and Louisville, who won the national championship. UConn with Kemba Walker a few years ago. 
they weren't even a tournament team going into the conference tournament won five consecutive then six consecutive to win it all right and then now uh, you know last year Louisville very similarly they dealt with a lot of injury over the course of the season were able to kind of catapult themselves from a momentum standpoint and ride that wave to a national championship Stauskas at the line he's now got 16 points five of five from the strike at 4 14 five we got Dockage checking in we're about a half hour away from the selection show Committee putting the final touches on what is going to be a wide open tournament. And Michigan State, you just know, they're going to feel something coming out of this. Stauskas is done for today. Boy, he had to work for every one of his 17 points. Four for 14 from the field. He knocked down a couple of threes early that were contested. But I think playing three days in a row and then the relentless pressure of Michigan State this finally wore him down. Here's Applin with the drive. And a foul and 56 seconds to go. As both head coaches are clearing their benches and Michigan State and their record. One of you said this as the game was just getting started. They're going to have a record of 26 and 8, which will be a win better overall than Michigan, who won the conference. Seems strange, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. Yeah. Michigan's the team that's had really the the better year but Michigan State a lot of the attention was taken off them when they went through that stretch where they lost six of ten late in the year but they're back and, and this also guys not to cut you off here but this still doesn't dampen the what the accomplishment of this Michigan team oh, no. win the Big Ten without arguably your best player in Mitch McGarry at the very least, they're going to be a two-seed, I would assume, heading into selection Sunday this evening. And then, uh, you know, they're going to still have an opportunity. The thing is, this is a tougher matchup for them because Michigan State knows that. Once you get in the tournament, you're not going to be playing in conference. You're going to have teams that may not be equipped to deal with the trio of perimeter talent that they have and the efficiency they show on the offensive end. A little bit earlier, we talked about the physical play in the game. Stauskas was the main... Efforts given by the Spartans against this Wolverine great. And look at, he's got scratches on the neck and on the bicep. And he has gone through battle. Bird. Irvin defending. Ball off his hands on the dribble and away it goes. So Michigan State will finish 26 and 8. And Michigan will finish 25 and and eight. Michigan State led by nine at halftime at a 10-2 run to start the second half, and they never looked back. Bielfeld is in there. Irvin. And Wetzel. The Spartans are whole and dangerous. You know, one thing we didn't talk much about today, this Spartan senior class is the only one that has yet to participate in a Final Four. Let's see if history holds true for the Spartans. So Michigan State wins their fourth Big Ten Tournament Championship. And they do it convincingly against the conference champions. The most outstanding player of this Big Ten Tournament was Brandon Dawson. And I would agree, high percentage shooting, double digits, and great rebound. On well, the impact that he's had, remember he didn't play in the first two meetings with Michigan, but the impact today was so apparent, the physical play and his versatile defense.